I compared one paid VPN to four of the top free VPNs to finally find out which one gives you better value. Today we're going to be comparing them based on four separate factors. Download speeds, availability, this includes settings, interface, and a bunch of additional features. Does it work with streaming services such as Netflix and Prime Video? And finally, do they log and sell your data? I make weekly videos helping users like you save money on streaming services and learning how to optimize their device. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit the subscribe button right down below. All of the research and testing in this video is completely honest. So that requires me to tell you, yes, I do have a sponsorship with the paid VPN IP Vanish. But no, I was not easy on that. So you can decide based on the results, which one of these options work best for you. On that note, the four free VPNs we're looking at today are Ola, Winscribe, Proton, and Award VPN. These were the four most popular by downloads in the Fire TV app store. Having a VPN connected can often cause your internet speed to slow down. And this is due to a bunch of different factors, such as additional encryption, the load on the server, and running your requests through the VPN. So to get a better representation of the speeds you're getting with these VPNs, to test this, I connected each VPN server to one in the US, and I tested tested the speed they're giving me on three separate speed testers, averaging out the results. Let's start with my internet speed, just by itself, no VPN connected. I'm on my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and the router is right in my basement in my studio, so there is no signal issue. I saw an average of 68 megabits per second. So this is our baseline and we're going to see how big of a drop off we see with our VPN services. I decided to start things off with Winscribe because they're a Canadian owned company. You know, I have to represent a little bit. Hey, so I got our results right here. Between our three tests, Winscribe saw an average of 75 megabits per second with one of the tests getting particularly high, all the way up to 134. So yes, that is actually an increase, and I'm going to explain why that happens sometimes in a little bit. Next up, we have Award VPN, which I didn't necessarily do because it's the most popular, but because it's owned, or I think it's owned anyways, by Doc Squippy. So I thought it'd be fun to throw in a product that's owned by a YouTuber. Now, Award saw a massive drop. In fact, in one of the tests, we saw as low as two megabits per second, with the averages being extremely low. There could be a number of reasons why it drops that low. For one, my main guess would be server room, right? They don't have a lot of servers, which would mean more load on the ones they do have, more stress. That would be my biggest guess. Next up, we have Ola or Hula. Ola VPN, which is owned and operated in Israel, but is available worldwide. One of the interesting parts about this one is it's the only one that when I ran speed test number one, it actually didn't give me any sort of reading, just an error. So the average speed drop ended up being close to 12 megabits per second, pretty low. Next up, we have Proton VPN. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because it's owned and operated by Switzerland based company Proton Mail. Overall, it had a score very similar to Winscribe sitting at 72. Lastly, we have IP Vanish, our paid VPN, and it should, and I say should, have an overall higher score than any of the free ones. In fact, IP Vanish did have the best overall score. Was it breathtakingly fast? No, it was around 75, which is close to Winscribe and Proton, but yes, yeah, still will be the most consistent over time. As for why we saw a speed increase on some of the VPNs, that could be attributed to your ISP throttling your internet. Depending on the area you live in, your internet service provider might equally distribute available bandwidth. This is done to make sure everybody has consistent speeds at the very least, which will then in turn throttle your internet. A VPN in some cases can help to bypass this. Let's talk privacy policy, and I believe this is maybe the most important topic in this video. Since all of your requests when you're connected to a VPN run through their servers, that means they have a pretty good idea of what you're doing online. That's where the term logging your data comes from. It's a pretty well-known practice. Any information gathered about your online activity activity could be either sold 
or held. Holding on to your data means it could later be given to authorities upon legal requests. As for selling it, that should be pretty obvious, especially for free VPNs. You know, when people say nothing is truly free, well, of course, they have to pay for their services, their servers, and updating their apps. Well, selling your data is a pretty good way of doing it. That's where their privacy policy comes in. It tells us what they are doing with that data. That's a major advantage to paid services is they typically have a no log policy, which means they never keep track of your data. And we say that very lightly because do I ever fully trust these companies? No, absolutely not. But when they don't have your data, that means when legal requests come, they don't have anything to hand over. So this is what IP Vanish's privacy policy states. They do not collect, monitor, or log your browsing activity, such as websites you went on. However, they do aggregate performance data to help improve their service. Now let's check out our Israeli-owned VPN service. Hola. Their policy states that they do keep personal data for as long as you have your account running. And as for your log data, they store it for up to 12 months. Yeah, that's a pretty long time. Now, I didn't see anything in there stating they don't sell your data, but they do say they won't sell your personal information. Two kind of different things. However, they do say they will share your personal information with affiliates and other partners when necessary. When would that ever be necessary? Seems a little sketchy to me. Winscribe is a Canadian owned service, so I'm expecting pretty big things. And according to their privacy policy, so should you. Stating they do not source IP, sites you visited, or the length of your VPN sessions. Even stating that users should get to take their own browser history to the grave. Pretty strong statement by Winscribe, but I did find something from two years ago. I did want to mention. Local authorities in Ukraine had seized servers owned by Winscribe, but that's usually not a problem. However, these servers were not properly encrypted, which Winscribe admitted to. Now, does that mean it's still an issue? Maybe not. However, once something like that happens, when you're essentially a security company, that does tarnish your reputation a little bit. Definitely something to keep in mind at the very least. However, overall, I really do like the sound of their policy. Award VPN's privacy policy is Kind of exactly what I expect out of a free VPN. Like I said earlier, running servers, upgrading equipment, all of that does cost money. And yes, pretty obvious, when you run a business, you also want to make money yourself off of it. You want to profit. Award straight up states, the data you give such as searches, description you buy, or content you watch may be used to help improve services, website, and of course provide the service. My interpretation is, yeah, that sounds like selling it. And because your data is logged, of course with any legal legal requests, they will hand it over to authorities. Pretty normal. Let's talk Proton. Because they're located in Switzerland, they have some of the strongest privacy laws online in the world. Their policy definitely follows this trend, stating numerous times that they do not log data and never will. But similar to Winscribe, I was able to find at least one instance of a breach. Here, a hacker back in 2023 was able to get access to information via Telegram, resulting in email leaks and potentially other personal information from tens of thousands of subscribers. Privacy is important and depending on how much you care about where your data is going, it's clear going with a paid or free service with a no log policy is probably the better choice. One thing I care a lot about with these services is usability and extra features. On top of that, with free services, I want to know what do I have to do to get it for free. IP Vanish offers a clean and easy to navigate interface, offering servers through tons of countries with multiple available in each. To start using it, you're going to need to purchase accounts and then log in through the app or browser. Luckily, if you are sold on the paid VPN already, they are the sponsor of the channel. So I have a 75% off discount code down below in the description. They also give you 30 days free. So if you don't like it, you can cancel it and you don't pay anything. They also have a number of VPN protocols to choose from, such as WireGuard, which is the gold standard for VPNs right now. It's the fastest and most secure. You can also take advantage of split tunneling, which means you can set certain apps to not use the VPN where everything else will be connected to the VPN. Award VPN offers you a six hour pin that gives you access to all of their servers while it's active. To get that pin, you just have to scan a QR code and then go through a few pages loaded with, yeah, <laughs> 
quite a few Google ads. Is it annoying? Yes. Is it a huge deal? Not really. When I did this process, I had to ask myself, is this better or worse than signing up for an account with an email? I personally would just rather sign up with an email and have it stay logged in. But I get it as a way of controlling traffic. ProtonVPN requires you to create an account to use their free VPN service. On the way to creating your account, they shove their paid services so far down your throat, you almost are going to think you have to purchase it in order to use the free offer. Option. But if you look hard enough, you'll see the free created account. Once this is done, you get access to their app and you can start using it immediately. Their interface actually has a pretty interesting design, showing you the regions as you scroll through the different countries. And I like that they have a pretty big number of countries and servers available. Ola VPN, which you can use without a login, that is a huge bonus. However, users are limited to the amount of data they can use each day. If you go over it, it will prompt you to purchase their premium option, which is a around $12.99 a month. They do offer a vast amount of locations and a pretty simple interface. Last up, we have Winscribe, which used to require no login. However, that has changed. You now have to create an account to start using it. Along with the free option, they do also offer a premium for around $10 a month. They clearly show how much data you get before you have to purchase premium, and it's around 10 gigabytes. They have these really large, easy to navigate icons. It's almost too large for me, but it's pretty simple and easy easy to use. The last thing I wanted to look at with these VPNs is maybe the most important. Does it work with Netflix? Using VPNs on streaming services is a pretty popular option. Because a lot of content is geo-restricted, this will allow you to access more content with your subscription through other countries. However, these services have gone pretty good at detecting VPNs. To test this, I connected to a US, UK, and one other country server, depending on what was available. I wanted to see exactly what the success rate was. Our paid VPN, IP Vanish, had a pretty strong showing with all three servers I connected to US, UK and Japan instantly working with Netflix and having extremely fast speeds. Proton VPN had the UK locked. So instead we did the US, Japan and Netherlands. And I was actually surprised all three worked perfectly fine with this VPN as well. And this really became a pattern. Both Winscribe and Award VPN also went three for three for the respective countries I was testing them on. The only difference is the slower free VPNs did take a lot longer to load because as you can see from the speed testing, they are quite a bit slower. The only VPN there was any problem with is Ola. And I think the main reason for that is because this VPN requires you to select the app that you're basically tunneling it through. And for some reason, this seems to mess up the internet connection somehow. I was constantly getting this NW-2-4 error, which when you look up online has something to do with your internet connection. It's not your typical unsupported region VPN error that you get from Netflix. I won't lie, I was genuinely surprised because in the past VPNs have had a lot of issues with streaming services, but I don't know if Netflix is just kind of given up on trying to block VPN servers, but it's clear they're not trying as hard as they used to. The final question, what VPN should you get? Well, I wanted to lay this information out so you could decide for yourself. It's clear that the free VPNs that I tested, two of them out of the four offered very consistent speeds close to IP vanish and have a pretty strong privacy policy. The biggest difference being with a paid VPN service, you're gonna have more servers, more access, more features, and more updates over time. The way I look at it as well, if it doesn't have a no log policy, I don't trust it at all. If it has a no log policy, I trust it a little bit more, but I still don't trust it 100%. Let me know down below in the comments what VPN you guys are using and which ones I should test next. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.